Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone who joined us today for another Nimble training webinar. Um, today we're going to go through the entire application, um, excluding Outlook and mobile today. Unfortunately, I'm having some technical difficulties, as I mentioned earlier. Um, but we have covered them in previous webinars um, that can easily be accessed on YouTube. Again, if you have any questions or feedback during today's session, um, please feel free to type them in the questions box and we'll cover them at the end of today's session in our uh, Q&A portion. So before we get started, let's spend a few minutes discussing what Nimble is. So Nimble is an easy to use CRM that works for you in Microsoft 365, Google Workspace, and everywhere else you work. It automatically combines your contacts, communication histories, email inboxes, and calendar appointments. It also integrates with social media and almost 200 different other SaaS applications. All right, so let's go to the actual Nimble app. Let me just move some things around. Okay, here we are. All right, so here we are on Nimble's Today page. This page was designed to allow you to completely customize it to your specific needs and the role you play in your company. Um, before the Today page starts populating with data, we have to make sure that we've connected everything we need to Nimble. All right, so to do that, let's first start in Networks and Imports. So you go to this a uh, little eye icon at the very top right. You click it and then go down to networks and imports right here, highlighted in blue. You click that and then it'll take you to this page here. So let's first make sure that your email account is connected to Nimble. And uh, you can do that by clicking this button right here. So Nimble supports all email providers as long as they are IMAP. So that's I-M-A-P. Um, unfortunately, we don't support POP, but if your email is POP, you can try contacting your email provider to see if they can enable IMAP for you. So now if you're using Microsoft 365, um, we have great news for you because it's really easy to connect your email and your calendars and even import contacts with one click. So if we go down here, you can see that we have these checkboxes here. If you'd like to um, connect your email, uh, import your contacts, and connect your calendar, all you have to do is click this button here, and it'll take you to this menu where you can sign in with your Microsoft account. All right. And also, just as a note, um, and we'll kind of cover this a little bit more, um, if you do intend to import contacts, do make sure to tag them. Um, and it's really important to do this to ensure that both you and everyone else on your team know who imported what contacts and from where. And we can go into tags a little bit more later on. Now, if you're using Gmail, connecting is also really easy. You can just go ahead and click this button here and then you have different options, very similar to Microsoft 365. If you're using any other IMAP type emails, uh, you can go back up here to email accounts, select IMAP, and then go in and add your information in these fields. So Nimble also uh, integrates with social media. We directly integrate with Twitter, meaning that after you connect your Twitter account, um, and you can do that by scrolling down and clicking connect social network. I already have my Twitter account uh, connected right here. Um, so after you connect your Twitter account, you'll be able to see conversations you've had with your prospects and customers on Twitter directly inside Nimble together with your email conversations with them. Facebook, together with Instagram and LinkedIn, made the business decision a few years ago to close their APIs. So unfortunately, we currently only uh, directly integrate with Twitter, um, but we do still make it possible for you to use Nimble on all of your favorite social media networks via our browser extension called Nimble Prospector. And I'll cover that a little later in the webinar. 
on the topic of social media, LinkedIn in particular, um, it's possible to import your LinkedIn connections into Nimble by downloading them from your LinkedIn account and then using our CSV import to bring them into Nimble. Again, always make sure that you and your teammates are applying tags to all contact imports. If you want to make sure that your LinkedIn contacts are always up to date in your Nimble account, you can either run this export and import periodically, or you can use our Nimble Prospector browser extension to bring them in as you add them to your LinkedIn network. Personally, I prefer the latter just because it helps to not overwhelm your contacts. And also please note that uh, Nimble will always automatically merge all duplicates if they have the same email address. Okay, so back on the topic of importing contacts, um, and also speaking of CSV files, they're a really convenient way to import contacts since a lot of companies track customers and prospects with their spreadsheets. All right, so let's go into our CSV importer. You can go in there by Quick Connect, clicking CSV. And when you're importing a CSV file, you can either make sure that all your column names correspond with the names of the fields in Nimble, or you can manually map them upon import. So if I click this right here, this is just a sample of what I have. Um, as you can see, we have these kind of automatic uh, mappings. We have email address and full name. And if you make a custom mapping, you can save it, or you can choose from your saved mappings right here. So let's go back. All right, so that covers importing contacts. Let's go back to the Today page. All right, now that your emails and calendars are connected and your contacts have been imported, the Today page will start populating with valuable business information. The Today page is completely customizable and you and everybody else in your company can pick what widgets they want to see. And as you can see, you can also change your background. I changed mine to this one. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever watched this movie, but it's one of my favorites. It's called Kiki's Delivery Service. But anyway, um, back to the topic. Um, the widgets can be moved around, removed, and duplicated. And there are a couple ways to do this. So you can either click on the Manage Widget option on the top right-hand side, and if you click it, it opens this interface here where you can click and drag all of your widgets. So let's close that. Or you can click the three dots on the right hand corner um, of each of the widgets and you can see that each widget has it if you click it you have the option to move hide or duplicate the widget now duplicating widgets can be really useful if you'd like to be able to see your personal calendar in one box and your team calendar in another box or uh, if you want to customize your widgets in any other way like that and that way you don't have to click this drop down menu every time you'd like to change the view. You have the ability to move widgets around. So the ones that are important to you, like your calendars or your tasks are at the very top of your page. So let's go into each one of these widgets, starting with call logging. So down here, the call logging widget can help you track all your interactions with your customers to help you stay on top of your follow-ups, improve relationships, and measure your team's success. Next up, we have custom activities. And this widget will allow you to display all your pending, completed, and overdue custom activities. In the deals widget, where did I put it? <laughs> right up here. You can check the status of deals and your overall pipeline while taking progressive action directly from the dashboard. Um, so you can click to access engagement history and current insights on key contacts, or you can update deal statuses, add notes to existing deals, or even create new ones all from this little widget right here. Your stage funnel will allow you to track your sales funnel. You can monitor your active prospects, leads, and opportunities at each stage and see a quick overview of your stages to know where you need to focus to meet your goals. Next up, we have the pipeline chart. 
and this widget shows all of your deals organized by date. The color coding on each bar gives you a visual of the amount of, uh, for the deals you're managing by the stage they're in for that month. And you can also change the different views. So right now we're on weighted, or you could go to total. And we have other options here. So you could just see yours or your whole team. So next we have the tasks widget. And this is just a to-do list for you. Um, you can see all your open tasks, upcoming tasks, overdue, completed, important, as well as tasks for the rest of your team. So right now I have my open tasks open, but I can also go to team, team tasks um, and choose upcoming, important, et cetera. Next is the events tab or a, yeah, events widget, or you can call it calendars, whatever you'd like. Um, and this will allow you to review your meetings for the day. You can select from this drop down menu here to either see all your calendars or just the calendar you've connected to Nimble. Um, and we also have multiple pages for you. Next up in the signals widget, um, you can see how your prospects and customers are interacting with you on Twitter. It's just a quick little overview of your Twitter interactions. Lastly, we have highlighted contacts, and this widget will give you the option to see important contacts based on parameters you've set, such as title, location, company, or interests. And to personalize these suggestions um, for highlighted contacts, you can edit the search criteria within contact keywords in your Nimble settings. And again, to get to settings, you go up here to this eye icon in the top right hand, and then you go to settings right here. Nimble will search these keywords in the social and contact bio for your contacts to surface relevant people for you to connect with. And speaking of contacts, let's move on to the contacts page. The contacts page will probably be the one you use the most. Um, Nimble has a lot of great features, but it's a contacts database at its heart. You can easily see all your contacts, just people, just companies, important contacts, recently viewed contacts, recently added, recently contacted, people you set stay in touch reminders for, and finally people you've removed. So let's review what an individual contact record looks like in Nimble. Go to important. And here we have John Ferrara. If you don't already know, he's Nimble CEO. So here in his contact record, you can see all the basic information um, at the top corner of the contact record right here. And we include their name, picture, title, the company they work for, a short bio, and some other things. Like here, you can also see his um, social media icons. Now, from the contact record, particularly from this tiny little corner right here, it's really easy to uh, do certain activities like logging notes. So there you can see it opens up that little pop-up. You can just close that out. You can log past activities here. You can schedule future activities. You can send a tracked email message. And you can even pick uh, templated emails from here as well. Or you can add your contact to a deal or add a deal to your contact. From this contact page, you also, or contact record, you also have the ability to set up privacy. So here I have my contact shared with everyone, but if I click this little down arrow, I can set it private to myself, viewable to everyone, but editing is limited to myself, or I can set some custom privacy. Um, Privacy groups are really useful if you want each of your teams um, or departments to have different sets of permissions. 
This can really speed up onboarding. So for example, every time you add a new sales rep to your team in Nimble, you can just add them to your sales team settings and they'll have the same set of permissions as previously determined. On the Nimble contact record, you can also set up stay in touch reminders. And here we have our default um, time period. So we have weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually, and you can also set up a custom time period. So maybe like every three weeks or every three days, something like that. And from here, let me go back there. It's also really easy to reset this reminder or remove it. Another useful feature is the ability to assign a contact owner. And here I have it assigned to myself, but I could also change the assignment to one of my other team members or just leave it unassigned. If I scroll down a little bit, you can also review, edit, and create new tags, as well as qualify leads using fields like rating, status, source, and type. So here in this little menu, we see our tags. And you can edit them clicking this button here. You can remove them by clicking the tiny little X, or you can add a tag by typing one in. Um, if you have like a pre-saved tag as you're typing, it'll auto-populate. Um, if it's not already saved, um, then you can just click save and that'll save a new tag for you. And here we have our lead fields. These individual fields can be customized in settings. So let's go back to this button up here and then click settings right there. Or actually, uh, sorry, this one can be customized in data fields. So we go up here and go to data fields and you can customize these lead fields like that. Back to the contact record on the right hand side under interactions. So if I press this here, well, this is the default, but if you're somewhere else, you can press this. Um, you'll see the entire history of the interactions you've had with this person, including all of your notes, emails, Twitter messages, deals, and any activities. You can also use the individual tabs as the main interactions tab can get a bit overwhelming as your relationship with this contact grows. So as you can see, I have everything here, but if I wanted to narrow down my view, I could just go to activities and I would only see activities. I can click this drop down menu to see the different kinds of activities. So if I only wanted to see calls, I would click this and then it would show me the calls. Right now I don't have any with him, but um, if he did, it would show up right here. So under the activities tab, we see activities. This only shows the notes. This is messages, and this includes both emails and Twitter interactions. And then you can see all the deals that they're on. All right, so next up is the deals tab, oh, sorry, the data fields tab. So if I go up here, click data fields, you can create up to five custom tabs, and under each of these, you can uh, have up to 200 individual custom fields. All these fields can be segmented and it's ideal to use for any specific information you'd like to record. And again, you can customize your data fields if you go up to the settings icon and click data fields from the drop down menu. You and your team members can also upload files. So if I go all the way here to the end, you can upload files to your contact record from OneDrive, Google Drive, Dropbox, or you can upload them from your own computer. All right, so let's go back to the main contacts page so I can show you our segmentation feature. All right, so you can launch the segmentation feature by either clicking into the main search box. So right here, 
or you can go on the left hand side in this like dark blue bar and click plus add segment and they both take you to the same page. So using the segmentation feature, you can search across many different data fields to help you organize your contacts into lists. And once you've organized your contacts into a list, you can take bulk actions, send group messages and set follow up tasks. So let's set up an example just so I can kind of walk you through how you do that. So let's click add contact filter. And I want to see anyone who was last contacted by my team. All right, so now I have last contacted. And let's also do people who have an email address. So I'll pick email and then not empty. And that's just a long way of saying that they have an email address recorded. So let's go over the actions that we can do on this list. So if I select all of them, you can mark the entire list as important. You can add tags, stay in touch reminders, and you can also take bulk actions like changing the owner, privacy, owner and privacy, and you can also add them to a lead pipeline. And we'll go over lead pipelines a little bit later in this webinar. You can also merge these contacts. I don't really wanna do that right now though, um, so I'm gonna skip that. You can export them into a CSV file, or you can export them to MailChimp or vCard. And then lastly, you can send a group message. Well, also, not lastly, you can also uh, clear the selection or delete all of these contacts, but we don't wanna do that right now, so I'll skip over that. Um, but yeah, you can also send a group message. So let's go into group messaging. Nimble allows you to send targeted email address or email messages to up to 300 contacts per day, um, depending on your plan. This is a great way to send targeted sales outreach or marketing messages to lists of your contacts. The most common question we get about Nimble's group messaging is if it can replace a marketing automation system. And the simple answer is no. Our group messaging was designed to be used in conjunction with our segmentation feature and to allow you to send targeted email outreach. One of the biggest advantages of Nimble's group messaging is that messages are sent from your personal email address. So they'll appear as if they were sent from you and not a marketing, like anonymous marketing email system. So when you're composing emails in the group messaging window, you have the option to use merge tags. And these are really cool. Um, so if you pick the first name merge tag, it'll look like this in the text. Um, but in the actual email, uh, it'll automatically grab the first name of whoever the recipient is um, and insert it here so you can personal, personalize your message. So if I wanted to say, hi, John, or hi, Anne, I would just put hi, the merge tag for the first name, and then you can also put a comma afterwards to make it more personal. Other than merge tags, you can also attach files. And you can also use other formatting options to customize your email. To set up your email signature, you can go to settings up at the top again. Go to settings. And then in this left hand menu, you can go to email settings and then click email signature. And from this little interface here, you can either just copy and paste an existing email signature, or you can create a new one from this box. So let's go back to group messaging. All right, so once you create your email, you also have the option to save it as a template by clicking this button up here. Um, and this can help you save time on retyping the same message again in the future, as well as, um, and you can also pick from your existing templates here. Templates are shareable, so you can easily share them with your team. Before you send your outreach, um, you can also send yourself a test message just to make sure that everything looks good, all your links are working, et cetera. 
And after, after you've sent your message, you can review the insights and clicks on, on clicks and opens. And in that report, you can see how many people are interacting with your message. And this can help guide your outreach. Um, so for example, you can go ahead and send another message to someone who's opened your message already or someone who's opened multiple messages. All right, so now let's go into activities. And let's go to listing here. So activities listing provides you with a comprehensive table of scheduled and completed activities. The table columns can be configured to quickly see which data is important to you. And additionally, activities can be exported as well. You'll be able to select the team members for whom you'd like to create the report on the left-hand side. And so if I go all the way here to the top left-hand corner, you can see this text, it says assigned to, and then some icons right here. If you just click those icons, you can select which team members you'd like to see the activities of. So let's go with my activities and then apply filter. You can also pick which activities you want to see specifically and select the time frame on the right hand side of the screen. So let's go to quick filters here. You can see the different kinds of activities. If I just want to see tasks, I can click that. And if I want to change the time frame, I can go to the right hand side. And you can see this tiny little uh, calendar icon right here. Just click the button right next to it and you can select a time frame. Okay, and to export this report, um, it's only one little thing right now, um, so I'm not actually going to export it, but you can go to the export button. And then you can either choose your filtered activities, so whatever you've already put, or all activities. And then you can export. All right, so let's move on to leads now. So the leads feature enables you and your team to visualize the progress of your leads, qualifying them as they go through the buying phase and ultimately converting to a sale. And this isn't just for sales. If you're in some kind of other services industry or um, another kind of role, we have different kinds of pipelines um, or you can customize your pipeline to fit your business needs. So here I have this regular leads pipeline and you also have influencer relationships the sky's the limit. It really just depends on you and your business needs. So at the beginning of your lead generation process, you may find yourself with a bunch of potential deals sitting at the early stages of your pipeline. And these deals might not be ready to move forward through the sales process, but they also might not be cold enough to be marked as lost or deleted. This can cause a lot of clutter in your deals pipeline and can distract you from focusing on the deals that require your attention. In Nimble, you can add leads to your account before adding them to your deal pipelines. The lead pipeline is a separate pipeline to store your pre-qualified leads before they become deals. Once you decide that a lead is qualified, you can easily convert leads to deals and add them directly into your pipeline to start your sales process. All right, so let's go into setting up pipelines and stages. After you've acquired a new lead, it'll go through a series of phases to be qualified. Depending on your business, these qualifications can include scheduling a sales call, sending a marketing message, or sending a quote, etc. To set up your pipeline so that it reflects your internal processes, visit the Leads tab right up here, and then choose Settings. And that's all the way in the top right corner. So go to settings and once you're here, you can click add new pipeline to start the process of naming your pipeline and creating stages. So I have a pipeline created already and I'll just use this as an example. So here you are not only able to add a name to your stage, but you can also add instructions for each stage. 
So if I click edit stage or edit, edit stages up here, I can click into each of these and set a name and stage instructions by clicking this edit button right here. And make sure to save every time you make any changes. Well, I mean, if you want to save this, save the changes. You can also not save if you decided you want to restart. And also we have this little trash can icon here if you'd like to delete a stage. So if I scroll down a little bit, oh, oops, I guess this one doesn't have it. Oh yeah, here, there we go. So if I scroll down a little bit, you can see unsuccessful exit reasons or lost reasons. And after you've created a pipeline, you'll be able to set lost reasons, which can help you better understand trends and ways to improve. So here I have a couple just um, for this influencer relationships one. One lost reason is they're too busy. Another one is that they're an industry mismatch. And you can set more so you can track um, your progress with leads or you can uh, kind of understand why you're losing them. All right, so next one is lead card fields. So you can customize the list of fields in lead cards so that they're relevant to your business. Right now I have pretty default ones. Um, I guess one that's not really default is Twitter. Um, you can add more by clicking this plus button and then going into this menu here and just clicking the fields that you'd like to include. The fields that you select will appear at a glance on the lead card when you're back in the pipeline view. So let's go back to the pipeline view so we can see what that looks like. So if I go back to the leads tab and go into the cards, you can see that it includes kind of like an at a glance summary for the people who have um, the information in those fields. Full info about your leads can be found within the contact record or by switching to the listing view mode. And you can change your view mode by going up to this top section right here and click listing. And so here it changes the view and you can see all the different fields clearly right here. And that's our lead pipelines feature. Let's go into deals now. So just click that in the very top. You can use the deals feature to manage sales opportunities, marketing projects, regular projects, renewals, and more. Nimble allows you to create as many pipelines as you need, and the account owner can delegate permissions to different users to be able to configure and create pipelines. To create a new pipeline or edit an existing one, you can go to Customize Pipelines, and that would be this button, the third button on the very top left-hand side. Just click into Customize Pipelines, and then click Add Deal Pipeline. And here you can set a name, and once you set a name, you can go into the menu. So I'm just going to go into our sample pipeline here, Opportunities. All right, so the number of stages completely depends on your sales process. Here you can see I have six stages, but I can add more or take away. It all just depends on your business process or your sales process. And you can easily drag and drop them if you need to change the order, rename them, etc. Nimble also gives you the option to limit the number of days in each stage. And here you can see I have them all limited for about a month. Um, but if I click this edit button here, I can change the name and I can change the number of days. So if I wanted it to be two weeks, I could just put 14, click save. And there I have it limited to 14 days. All right, so those are our settings. And here I'll go back to pipelines. To create a deal, select the new deal button. It would be the first one in this row of three. So just select new deal there. And from here, you can name your deal, uh, relate the deal to multiple contacts and companies, add the valued amount for the deal, schedule an expected close date, project the probability of closing, and choose the beginning stage for your deal. 
And you can also add comments here as well. To export your deals from Nimble, just click export to CSV. And from here, you can choose which deals you'd like to export. So here we have all deals, active, one, lost. And you can also export lists based on deals owned by specific team members. So I click this drop down button. I see my team members right here. And then once you have your settings down, you can click export and it'll uh, automatically put them into a CSV file for you. All right, so next up we have reports and I believe this is the last one for the main Nimble app. Um, Nimble enables you to build reports for specific pipelines um, for your team as well as uh, individual users during any time period you select. You can choose from one of our preset time periods or use the calendar at the top of the page to set your own. The dashboard is where you can view yourself and your team members deal progress at a glance. So here's the dashboard. And as you can see, we have these preset time periods. Or you can select a custom one using this calendar icon. Or you can just type in the custom dates here. Let's move on to forecasted deals. This will show you all future deal outlooks. You can sort by one month, three months, one year, or specific time intervals. Again, we have these preset ones in your calendar. And then last, we have our deals history. And this is where you can view all historic deal results. Again, we have our preset time periods, but you can also customize them using this calendar menu. And that covers all of the main features in Nimble. So let's now take a look at how you can use our browser extension and email add-ons to access Nimble from the places where you probably spend the most time in. All right, so let me get out of here. And let's go to, um, let's go to LinkedIn first. So Nimble Prospector, uh, I can be opened with this icon up here. Nimble Prospector is a browser extension and it's available on Firefox, Chrome, Microsoft Edge, and Safari. And it works on any website in any third-party cloud-based application and on any social media platform. And as you can see, we're here on LinkedIn. Nimble Prospector will allow you to create new contact records and create or, and update existing ones straight from LinkedIn or anywhere that you can find a hyperlinked name. So you simply hover over a hyperlinked name, just like this. And on the right hand side, or you can also move the prospector extension to the left side, it'll automatically create a new contact record for that person. Another way to do this is to uh, maybe like I'll click into their name. You can highlight the name if it's not uh, if it's not hyperlinked like that, and it'll do the same thing. This can also work on company websites. It'll also work on Facebook, Instagram, wherever you can find someone's name. If it's hyperlinked, um, it'll make it easier for us to auto populate the data for you. And like I said earlier in the intro of today's webinar, unfortunately, I'm having issues with Outlook, um, so I won't be able to show you how it looks um, in Outlook, but it's really similar to Gmail. So if I go to Gmail here, um, if you're using Chrome and you already have the Prospector browser extension installed, uh, the Gmail extension will automatically appear in Gmail and you'll be able to do um, everything that we already covered. So let me open up someone here. All right, so you can access people's contact record, add notes, log activities, schedule activities, message them or add them to a deal. 
You can also add them to lead pipelines and basically do everything that you can do in the normal contact record. All right, and with that, um, I think we've covered all of the main Nimble features as well as everything about Nimble Prospector. So I can go on and move into our Q&A session. But before we do that, I just wanted to let you all know that we have more webinars coming up. Um, oh, it looks like I didn't update this. I thought I did. Um, but anyway, uh, next week we're going to be going over segmentation, group messaging, and custom fields. And every two weeks, we're going to have more general overviews. So if you'd like more of your team members to see this webinar, or if you'd just like to go over it again, um, we have more general overviews coming up. And you can access all these webinars by going into nimble.com slash company slash webinars. And Nedia, if you'd be able to send that in the chat, that'd be great. And we also have a special offer for any of our new users. If you sign up today, you can get 30 days of Nimble for free using the uh, website or the link uh, nimble.com slash offers slash webinar 30. And if you could send that in the chat as well, that'd be awesome. Okay, so now it's time for questions. Um, let me just set up here so I can see everyone's questions. All right, so we have a question from James. Can you bring in contacts from your iPhone? So the Nimble iPhone app makes it really easy to sync your contacts to Nimble. Um, you would go to settings on the Nimble app, which is on the bottom right corner. Um, unfortunately, I can't show you this right now. Um, my uh, computer isn't really cooperating with me today, I'm sorry. Um, but you would go to settings and then select contacts and choose your method of contact sync. Now you can have the option to perform a manual sync of your address book contacts, or you can enable Nimble to automatically check your address book for new contacts whenever you open up the app. And I have this uh, support link here. Um, Nedia, if you could send that to them, that would be great. All right, so we have another question from Vanessa. How do I merge duplicates? Okay, let me go back to our Nimble app. And if I go into contacts here, uh, you can do this a few different ways. I mentioned earlier that uh, duplicates will automatically merge if they have the same email address. But if you'd like to merge individual ones, um, you can go into the contact rec or the contact page and you can use like the segmentation feature like I mentioned earlier. Um, let's do the same thing that I did before. So last contacted. Yeah, so you can bring up a segment like this and then take actions um, from this menu. So if I wanted to merge these two people, I could go ahead and do that here. And I hope that answers your question. All right, we have another question from Paul. How do we add company name to list of people in contacts? So unfortunately, we don't have a feature in the contacts tab to edit or add a company name to a list of contacts. Um, you will have to do it manually by editing each individual contact record. Uh, however, it's a huge list um, we recommend Oh, if it's a huge list, we recommend to delete those people and re-import them as a CSV file. And just to make sure you label your column headers, or uh, just make sure you label your col column headers with first name, last name, and company name. And we have a support article here for you, so we can share that in the questions box. Okay. So it looks like we have a few more questions. Oh yeah, I have one question about the mobile overview. Unfortunately, my computer hasn't been cooperating with me, so I don't, uh, I won't be able to show the mobile overview, but we do have some previous webinars that cover it, um, and they're really easily accessible through YouTube. Um, and we can send a link to our YouTube channel in a second here. 
great, Nimble Prospector does not appear on my LinkedIn page. How do I connect this? Um, so if you have the extension installed, um, you just have to click this icon up here. But if that's not working, then you may have to contact our care team so that we can troubleshoot this for you. Um, it definitely should uh, show up um, as it kind of doesn't really matter if you log in to LinkedIn or um, wherever because it should work on any website. So we can connect you with our care team to help you sort this issue out. All right, let's see. So Jennifer is asking, I am migrating, migrating from Keep. Am I correct that deals are the same as campaigns? Um, now, I'm not entirely sure about what this means, so give me a second to look this up for you. Okay, so for this one, I think we're going to have to um, connect you with our care team uh, and they can kind of walk you through uh, the deals and campaigns. Um, I'm not entirely sure about the specifics for migrating from uh, on migrating from Keep, so um, they can help you out with that. All right, so anyone else have any other questions before we close out the webinar? I'll give it a couple seconds. Okay, so it looks like we're all done with our questions. Um, thank you so much for everyone who joined today. Um, I really hope that this webinar was helpful for you. Uh, like we mentioned uh, in our invitation to you, our webinar recording will be available shortly after this webinar. We'll email you the link. Um, and yeah, so that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, hope to see you in another Nimble webinar. Have a great, great rest of your day.